finish line. Solo move, 17 kilometers to go from the village of Querimont. He did it, becoming the first Tour de France champion to win the Tour of Flanders since Eddie Merckx in 1975. Second was two-time Tour of Flanders winner Matthew Vanderpool, and winning the sprint behind was Mads Pedersen. But oh wait, there was also some Americans in the mix. Yes, Nielsen Palace in his debut finished fifth for EF Education. In ninth place, another American, Movistar rider Matteo Jorgensen. What a day out. And we're talking a day that saw moves in action already from the gun because none other than Matthew Vanderpool, he said he likes riding towards the back of the peloton. Well, he was caught out. And that was early on in the day, around about 260 kilometers still the race. He was off the main pack for around 20 kilometers. Alpes and de Kunic had to put their men to work early on. Sylvain Dillier, also Soren Craig Anderson working for Matthew Vanderpool. Those guys, well, they weren't around for the final for Matthew Vanderpool. Things did come back together, but it was a tense, hectic moment. And then we saw that escape go free. Eight men that included Canadian Hugo Hull. Up front, there was a massive, huge crash. I think it was right before that time of the third Quermont. The crash took out past Tour Flanders winner Peter Sagan, also Tim Wellens. We saw Walt Van Aert go down on the crash as well. Perhaps that affected him in his ride today. There was a Bahrain rider that apparently caused that crash. And in fact, the jury decided to decue the rider because of the crash. And that happened during the race. But on the Molenberg climb, we saw UA Tim Emirates starting to set things up 100 kilometers out. But instead, it was Casper Asgren from Sudal Quickstep, a former winner here in the Tour of Flanders, who went ahead on the Molenberg climb, 100 kilometers to go, back behind. Nielsen Powell's looking attentive in his first edition debut of this race. And that move went free. Nine riders. That also would eventually include Matteo Jorgensen, who bridged up with Benoit Cosnefois. Nine riders chasing that eight up front. They would come together, and then we had a massive group up ahead. And another massive second of crash. And this time around, Benny Gourmet, Get Wevelgen winner, was so bad off, had to be taken away to the hospital. Well, Tade Pogacar lit things up on the Quermont the first time around, but then it was on the second time. Again, UAE Tim is really lighting things up, going into that second climb up the old Quermont, and that split things up for the race. And it was 29 kilometers to go on the Kreuzberg. Vanderpool lit it up. Van Aert didn't quite look magnificent. Pog was there with them. That move brought those players, the big three men, up to the escape that was with Paulus and with Jorgensen and also with Mads Pedersen, who would eventually go solo, picked the right moment to do so, but they later caught him back. And on the Quermont, as soon as those cobbles began, we saw Tadej Pogacar light it up. And just as he promised coming into this race, he knew he had to get away solo and he knew he had to use the climbs if he had a shot of trying to beat these bigger guys. Well, in the village of Quermont, he was solo and up at the top, he was going to make history. And eventually, over the Paderberg, he had enough time, around about 15 seconds. And on that top of the Paderberg, it was the final climb. And from there, it was a TT here to the finish in Odenard. It was Pogacar versus Vanderpool, the two greats. And he held enough time to celebrate here on the finish line in Odenard. Tour de France champion, two-time Tour de France champion, win in Flanders, and they had a little meeting after the finish line with Vanderpool, and they were happy for each other. And what a day of racing in the Tour of Flanders. Pogacar winner, Americans up there in the top 10, and a great day of racing.